let's talk about LLM ops. In particular, how do we take this traditional LML ops architecture diagram and figure out what might change when we put an LLM in here? So this is the same diagram we just saw in the previous video, but I'll walk through and point out a few key areas. First, model training might change. In traditional ML, you often retrain a model pretty frequently. As we've uh, discussed previously in the course, model training, outright completely de novo training for an LLM, is often infeasible. So this might be replaced with something lighter weight, like model fine tuning, which still produces a new model, or maybe pipeline tuning or prompt engineering. And these don't produce new models. But note that no matter what we do, all of these pipelines or fine-tuned models, they are either models or pieces of code, and our existing MLOps infrastructure knows how to handle those. Next, we've talked about human feedback, that being really important for LLMs, and so I'll say two comments about them. In the bottom left, human user feedback should be treated as an important data source available from development to production. And I'm saying data source because you may aggregate this feedback from multiple potential sources, internal and external. On the right, traditional monitoring, which is often fairly automatable, may need to be augmented by a constant human feedback loop. Now, automated quality testing related to human feedback may be much more difficult. So we've talked about how it needs to be augmented with human evaluation. And the place where that will probably happen is in this continuous deployment part. Rather than doing what you might do with traditional ML, like test on a batch data set offline, you'll more likely do incremental rollouts, showing the model or LLM pipeline to a small set of users, seeing how they respond, and increasing that percentage as you gain confidence. You also might see different production tooling. A big model might necessitate moving serving from CPUs to GPUs, and your data layer might have a new object like a vector database. Now, cost and performance can also be challenging. We've talked about this earlier in the course, and here I'll point out that one, model training or tuning may need to be managed carefully on the left, and then in serving, you may see larger cost, latency, and performance trade-offs, especially when you're comparing your own fine-tuned model versus a paid third-party LLM API. I will give the caveat that I'm comparing against traditional ML, by which I mean if you're coming from a computer vision or NLP background where you worked a lot with deep learning already, LLMs are going to be pretty familiar in terms of the costs of training, fine-tuning, and inference. So we've seen some things which may change, but even more will remain similar if you look at this diagram. The dev staging production separation and access controls for enforcing those remains the same. Our conduits for shipping pipelines and models are still Git and model registries. The lakehouse architecture for managing data is still critical. Our CI infrastructure can be reused, and we still have a modular structure for MLOps, where we develop these modular data pipelines and services you see in the boxes here. But we did mention some things which change. So in the next video, we're going to dive into a few more details about those.